Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, we're pouring a basement floor for a house foundation. This is a 40 by 26 house, and we're pouring a four inch thick concrete floor inside the basement. It's actually what they call a walkout basement or a daylight basement. It's got this front wall here that is right at grade, so they can walk out and see the, they actually live on a lake right here. You can't see the lake, but, so it's a pretty nice spot really for a house. Um, we're hired just to come in and pour and finish the concrete floor. It's it's the general contractor hired us. He's the one that spec the floor, estimated the floor, and then he's got some framers coming in to frame it on the next day. You can see there's a thick grade beam right down the middle of this. That's going to be a load bearing area that's going to carry some lolly columns, and it'll end up carrying the the center part of the house structure. So it's pretty thick in that area. That's going to suck up quite a few yards of concrete right in there. And then there's a couple other thicker areas too that's, that's going to hold some lolly combs for some, whatever, some type of supports. So my job today is just to come in here and pour and finish the concrete. So we're going to pour it, screed it, both load it. Then we're going to leave a guy and he's going to power trowel it smooth and saw some expansion joints in it. And then the rest of us... After we get done pouring here, the rest of us are going to take off and go do another project. Now the mix we're using, if you're wondering why there's no wire mesh in here, we got fiber mesh reinforcement in the concrete. We use the fibers in the concrete all the time on all our pours. When you pour inside a foundation like this, you don't really need wire or rebar. Um, as long as you got a, a good compacted sub base, you know, if you're if your gravel's compacted to about 99%, then nothing's going to settle. And the building's always going to be heated, so it's never going to heave. So the concrete floor really isn't going anywhere. If it does want to crack, I mean, we're going to saw contraction joints in it. So if it does want to crack, it should crack right in those contraction joints. It's not going to lift. It's not going to settle because your compaction is good. So the fiber mesh is more than enough reinforcement really for the something like this you don't need wire in something like this so we, we we came in and we use we actually got a laser set up that we're going to use for our middle grades but we use that laser to shoot our grades around the perimeter and then we snapped a chalk line that's what teal was mag floating those edges to is that chalk line around the edges and that chalk line matches the top of the wall right here in front of you this was the only axis where you see, see the truck chutes coming in. This was the only axis we had to the structure. They had delivered all the lumber materials, so there was lumber everywhere. So we had this one spot we could get to. And because the house really wasn't all that big, we decided just to use our chute extension on this instead of getting a pump truck. It doesn't make it that much harder, really, if the house is that small, just to use the chute extension. It's actually, you know, there wasn't really any room for a pump in here anyway, so the chute just made it the easier way to go. We got a couple loads coming in here. It was about 13 yards. The most concrete they can put on the trucks where we are here in Maine is, is 10 and a half. So anything over 10 and a half, you got to get two trucks. What we like to do usually is dump that first truck right out, whether he's got six, seven, eight, ten yards on, just get him dumped out, get him out of the way. That way we can get the second one backed in, start mixing while we're screeding. Those deeper areas, they were just about right to the top of our boots, so we you know, had to be careful when we step in them when they're full of concrete. A lot of guys, when they do the footings for the foundation, they'll pour those too. So those will already be poured in advance, these deeper grade beam areas. And then we just basically pour the four inch floor right over them. But for this one, for whatever reason, they didn't pour it in advance. Well, the first truck is empty. You can see the second one showing up right now. So he'll get his chutes on, get mixed up. Get it, we'll get him backed in here because this isn't going to take us long to get this screeded down. 
For you guys that want to learn how to pour and finish concrete like we do, we do all kinds of, we do patios, walkways, pool decks, stamp concrete, uh, concrete repair, we do epoxy floors, all that kind of stuff. You can learn how to do that from me in the Concrete Underground. I've got a link for that down below in the description of the video, right where it says show more. If you click on that little down area, then all the links will show up. And you can check out the Concrete Underground in there. I have all kinds of training videos that I teach you how to pour and finish concrete just like we do. So Darren's getting his his center pad, what we call a wet pad done. And that's the same height as the top of this concrete wall right here in the front. And we'll just use that to screed off from. We don't need to use grade stakes or two by fours or anything to screed rails or anything like that. We just wet screed. That's the way we've always done it. And that's how we find it easiest to do. How do you guys screed? Let me know in the comments. For you guys that screed concrete, what's the easiest way you guys have found to screed? And let me know if you think the way we're doing it is easy or not. That's a magnesium screed right there. That's really lightweight. It's 14 feet long. We have multiple different lengths of those probably six different ones so i'm up getting the second truck backed in it was actually kind of a steep driveway so it was a little tricky backing him in and then i'll get him mixed up while the rest of the guys here get this screeded and bull floated we're using the MBW Screed Demon. Uh, it's a battery operated power screed. This thing's really lightweight. It works really good to screed your concrete floors. I think I have a link for that down in the description too, guys, if you want to check that out. But that's the one we've been using lately. Uh, it's just for what we do, the type of screeding we do, it works really good. We screed concrete every day. So we just put the battery in it twist the throttle and off off we go T is raking over there on the right Darren's raking over on the left you can see how much work they're doing compared to <laughs> Luke who's actually doing the screeding the screeding part is the easy part stepping down in those grade beams though that's not that much fun now Tia will get the bowl floating done while Luke screeds the other half. We'll schedule a pour, you know, a house pour like this, whether it's big or small. We consider this a small one, but we'll schedule one of these pretty much every single day. And then on a lot of days, we'll go pour something else or we'll go set up a slab or a pool deck or a stamp patio or something so we're always working on a couple different jobs at least a couple different ones every single day that turns into you know at least 10 a week 10 different jobs a week that we're working on so that's that adds up to quite a few jobs in a month that keeps me running pretty busy you know doing estimates and traveling and back and forth so it's pretty much a minimum of two a day and sometimes we'll hop on a third one a day so it could be up to a 12 to 15 jobs a week that we do different ones we got six mil poly under this most of the house floors we do have the poly vapor barrier and that's to help keep moisture coming up through the subgrade and then up through the concrete floor into the house so it's basically just a moisture blocker is that what that poly is I should be back in that second truck right in here any minute. We had to juggle the first one, get the first one out of the way so he could wash his chutes up. Then when he got that done, I could get that second one down in there. All right, there, we got the second one down. We decided not to use the chute extension on this. We were just going to 
rev up the RPMs a little bit, give it a little push. We use water reducer in our concrete, so the 3500 psi concrete with the fiber, we can pour, you know, we can pour a good seven inch slump with the water reducer in it, and the water reducer is a chemical that just makes it a little looser without affecting the strength, so that makes pouring floors like this a lot easier. You can see how fast we got that spread out. It doesn't affect the finishability easier. It, the finishing is the same. It, this stuff finishes pretty easy as far as we're concerned. The only thing that's kind of a bummer on the poly is a lot of times you get a little bleed water that comes up to the surface and you know half the time that'll evaporate if it's in the sun if it's not in the sun if it's kind of in the shade that bleed water just sits on the surface you kind of have to get rid of that squeegee it off before you stop power troweling if it weren't for the poly that wouldn't happen that would make finishing a lot easier This floor was, the subgrade was actually graded really good on it. We'll get to a lot of jobs where we're trying to pour a four inch floor and the subgrades out of level two to three inches on a four inch concrete floor. So at that point, you gotta just call them back and say, you know, hey, this just isn't good enough. We can't pour a four inch concrete floor when your subgrade's out of level two or three inches. We, we don't want two inches of concrete in one area then seven inches in another area. We want to try to keep it as even to four inches as possible. So if they're up or down a half inch, you know, that we can get away with that and still make it work on something like this. But anything an inch or more out, I usually just tell them to come back and fix it. Again, I'm shooting my wet pad in the middle. It makes it a little more difficult right over that thick by there. You can see Darren stepped down in there. He almost went over the top of his boot. Once, once you get it filled with concrete, it's hard to remember exactly where it is. So we're all mag floating the edges. That's, I mean, before we can get it screeded, we got to have a pad to go by. So we'll get our edges all magged out. That's going to give that battery powered screed something to screed off from. And then we'll re-strike our center pad with the, we, we like striking the center pads with the hand screed. We just, there's no room for error here. So you want to make sure it's, this thing's perfectly flat. And we found that this is the best way to keep the floor as flat as possible. Sometimes when you vibrate, screed especially in a really thick area like this it tends to want to i don't know it just tends to want to float the concrete up a little bit and kind of puff it up a little bit so you might be an eighth of an inch high whereas if you hand screed it like that you can tell right off if you're high or low so you can make sure it's perfect that's the concrete driver right there chris So Darren's doing the, the power screeding this time. What's good is everybody on the crew knows how to do everything. Everybody can use the power screed. Everybody can rake. Everybody can bow float. So we j basically just jump on what needs to be done. No one has to tell anybody what to do. I'm getting a quick shot of Darren there screeding with the phone. Shows him at a different angle, so that makes it nice sometimes. Luke's getting any. See, Luke was pulling all that extra concrete out instead of just standing there watching. You'll get that all pulled out. The closer you can get the the concrete to the screed level, the easier it is to screed. You want it just a tiny bit high. You don't want it low for sure, but you don't want it too high either. You want to be able to keep moving backwards like Darren is right now. He's 
slowly moving that backwards without stopping even though he's walking through that thick area that's going to make your floor a lot more level if you stop and start all the time you're going to have areas that might have a little bit of dip or a little bit of a hump that you got to take out with a bow float so a floor like this you know a 40 by 26 floor goes in relatively fast if, if you know what you're doing you know it took us a little over a little over a half an hour to pour this probably 30 35 minutes and that was with they were kind of waiting for me to get that second truck in there too there was the access in the driveway there wasn't much room so if we had a little better access on this it probably we probably would have poured this in under 30 minutes leave a guy and then we're off to doing something else and this is you know this is seven in the morning so you're done pouring by 7 30 quarter of eight then you're off to another job to do something else Luke will end up staying here. He'll power trial this. He'll get done power trialing this today. You know, he's we're done pouring. Let's say we get done pouring at quarter of eight, eight o'clock. He'll be power trialed and sodden out of here by, you know, a little after noon, 1 p.m. And this will be all done. And then builders can jump right on it. So it'll end up drying or curing pretty fast. Luke and Eric, they'll finish that last little foot off by hand with a hand screed. They needed just a little more concrete. They'll scrape the chute down, then we'll get that truck out of there. See how we flip that chute over? It just makes pouring it over the wall a little bit easier. So we'll pull the rod a couple more times in that area. We'll get that rod out of there, get everything washed up. And then Tia, Tia's gonna finish bull floating first, but. Yeah, them guys will scrape out any excess, get that mag floated, even with top of wall. Then we can finish the bull floating so that's how we pour a basic 40 by 26 basement floor inside a foundation like this guys over the top of the wall again if you haven't subscribed go ahead down there and hit subscribe now thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one